Hello and welcome. My name is Gouda. This is episode 6 of my survival series. And in the last episode, we made this ama oh, 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 amazing gazebo. And along with these pathways here that really sell the fact that we were once a thriving nation and uh, over time it became crumbled and overgrown. I am still not convinced that this tree is quite right, but I don't really want to mess with it just yet until I have a, you know, a solid plan for what I want to do with it. But these pathways, I am really digging. And in between episodes, I made this uh gate here a little bit of an entrance i felt like this castle needed a better entrance than i previously had which was basically just a door and i think this will work and inside of here i got a chandelier and i wanted the chandelier a bit bigger but it made it way too crowded so i scaled it back a bit and I got these pots with the poppies and I thought that was a nice touch because this is the entrance to the iron farm as far and as well as like the trading hall here. And there's one other thing I did between episodes which is just a little fun little side project that I thought I would share while I was thinking about what I wanted to do for my next builds. So let's head over there real quick. So as you can see here, uh, once in a while, the cows will climb up these vines and they get hurt a little bit. And I thought, why not scale that up and make it so they climb up the vine and when they fall, they fall to their demise and that's what I did right down here I found out that they uh, the fall damage needed is 13 blocks so I made these pillars and uh, made them 13 tall and they do climb up all the way and then they fall I had a bunch of cows in here and um, they immediately started falling or climbing up and then falling. And uh, so I'm gonna need to make a little, little thing for the cows to hang out in, grow up and then come in here. And I think that's the only way because it was immediately, they were, it, it was faster than I could breed them. And, in general, in Bedrock, there is no entity cramming, so I'm thinking if I make them in a little area, breed them up, and have it so that the, the cows, the baby cows, um, kind of funnel out into this area, they grow up, and then they can do their thing. Look at that one go. Just like that. I also got to make it so they can uh, actually get funneled into this chest here properly because nothing's going into the chest. So we'll work on that. It's not a priority right now, but I thought it was a fun little mechanic and a, a unique way of uh, doing a cow farm. So I'm going to put that there. We'll go up here. And do, 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 boo. I don't have anything on me. We'll just leave it like that. That's fine. So what are we doing today? Um, so I sussed out a new area that's going to be right next to my castle here. And it's going to be a little, it's going to be quite different than what I've been doing. I don't want to be 
blocked in, if you will, into a certain palette or a certain style. I feel like I'm just gonna get bored if I just do one, one style here. So it's gonna be a little bit different, a little bit more fun. So we'll see how that goes. And I already got all my materials ready to go. And here, it's actually like the same kind of palette, but it's different, okay? It's different. Trust me. So, with that being said, let's get into a bit of a time lapse. Enjoy. Stop, 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 stop the time lapse. I don't know what I did, but I messed up somewhere in my build, in particular in this part of it. And I don't know exactly what I did just quite yet. Um, see these, it, I believe, this needs to come down quite a bit to make it a little bit better. This part, so maybe it needs to come down to about here so they're the level, they're level with each other. Um, but I'm going to stop the time lapse right there. Donkeys! And uh, what we're going to do once the donkeys move so I can do some editing magic. Guys, you guys are adorable, but you're going to screw this up. So what I'm going to do is, well, we can do this one. I'm gonna look into my eyes and nothing but my eyes and we're gonna spin. And just like that, it's all done. So let's start over in this direction over here. So I made a well using the mud and spruce and got some little overgrown azaleas on it and some berry bushes, little details here and there. And then on this side of the building, got some, you know, trap doors and some windows, a little bit of decoration here. And then this is like one of my favorite areas, actually. It's like a patio area where people can eat. And I really like the waterfall. And if you pay attention to the detail, the waterfall has kind of corroded the bricks, the, the stone, rather. And so it's turned into more of a cobble. And, you know, it's in the process of perhaps breaking uh, the foundation here. And, you know, something to look at, some more berry bushes and some greens. But I really like this as well. It's, I, I don't even know what to call it, but it's a fun little shape with a, um, just added little ambiance 
to this kind of more romantic area of the building. Very exclusive. So, coming around to the front here, we got the scoot sign. The S and the E took forever to figure out how I wanted it. The E is still not perfect. There's only four lines you can use and the E, whichever way you want to make it, you need five lines. But, you know, from far away, you can tell what it says, right? So, going around the front here, you know, you kind of saw in the time lapse, but it'll, I feel like it has a good amount of detail and looks really great. I used the jungle saplings as like a little bush tree thing. I thought that looks really nice. So inside here is the scoot shop with our new friend Armadillo. I still need a name for him. So if you got one, uh, leave it in the comments down below. But so in here, he's got a couple scoots, some brushes, and just a bunch of storage here with the pots. And so here, we got the ladder, but the ladder, I'm going to use these as like part of the ladder broke off. It's fallen, fallen over over time, but you can still get up because of the vines. So we go up here and here is some extra storage and our friend the armadillo is not very good at uh, managing space. So it's really cramped in here and just a bunch of just random knickknacks and just a bunch of junk really but he has it all in here nice and cramped and some of the roof is actually like falling apart and he's tried to fix it but he's not really handy so that is this building And then come in here and this is like a cave if you come in here you can kind of just barely see it, it says danger and I used uh, ender chests under some of these blocks and it makes it a little bit a little bit of a particle effect I thought that was pretty cool but this is a cave that has been abandoned and as you can see the nether portal is you know using crying obsidian here to say it's corroded and it's boarded off maybe the society before uh tried using the portal and found out the nether is not a good place to be in so they boarded it off said no one go in here it is dangerous don't go in. Really like this cave though. It has a lot of detail. Chains everywhere. Some dripstone. And so we'll go. i uh, just show you this side too. The is are really growing over. Got some berry bushes here. Really liking. If you look at it from like really any angle. It looks pretty great. But let's head upstairs. See what's going on here. A little bit of a curve in the stairs. You can even kind of look out to the patio area. Go in here. Shopkeeper is a horse. And it's a honey shop. So we got honey bottles in here. Nice storage. And then on this side is the honeycomb. Just a little bit of detail. Some azaleas growing on the roof. And this one, I kind of tried to put in some oak as well. To 
put in some shadows in here. I'm trying to play around with that. A little bit. Also, I need a name for this guy. If you have a name for this horse, put it in the description down below. So, going upstairs here, and this is kind of the honey operation system. So, if you can imagine, uh, this lever is kind of showing that honey is going into the gourd, and they're using a little bit of redstone here, and, and then making these honey blocks. The pots that are full of honey, quote unquote, full of honey, I put these little trap doors on them as a, they're, they're uh, locked. They have a cap on it. They're ready to be shipped out or, you know, put into storage. And if you look on this side, the honey is really getting out of control here. Uh, because here is the honey farm, which is designed by Silent Whisper. The video for that will be in the tutorial in the link down below. But so I got the honey bottles on this side and the honey comb on this side. And if we take a peek at what it kind of looks like, you can see the honeycomb kind of pops out the back a little bit. Um, looks like there might be a little bit of a fix where I can put some blocks under here, but I got this, uh, you know, the timer. Whoa, there's a lot in here too. <laughs> a lot of honeycomb getting dropped into there. But uh, it's not really something that I, I would have to push out this all by one block this way just to put blocks here and I don't really want to mess with it. it took me forever to really make this even though it's pretty simple um, I'm going to show you on the honey farm is this is where the uh, item sorter is the honey farm will pop out like bottles once in a while but if all goes to plan it'll come to this one try to go in here but it's filtered and the honey bottle will go back into this chest or this one actually this minecart chest so i think that's a really cool system that uh I'm not sure if Silent Whisper is the one that initially figured that out, but if you make this for yourself, one thing I did change is I put this rail on four ticks because when the minecart came here and it was time to come back, when the pulse happened, it wasn't long enough for the minecart to like get going. So. Keep that in mind if you make this for yourself. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Appreciate you watching. My name is Gouda, and remember, it ain't easy being cheesy. Have a good one.